you can actually create a circular picture-in-picture -picture face cam shot for your videos using iMovie and Apple Keynote, two free applications that come bundled with a Mac. Let me show you. Here we are in iMovie. This is iMovie version 10.3.9 running on Mac OS 13.5.2. And I have this project open. On the main timeline, I've got a series of B-roll shots. And on the overlay track up here, I've got an on-camera narration I recorded separately that goes with the B-roll. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select the on-camera narration clip in the browser. That brings it up in the viewer. Next, I'm gonna go up to the top right of the iMovie interface and select the share button. And from the share menu, select save current frame. This will export the current frame in the viewer, which is a frame of my on-camera. I'll save out the frame. Then I'm gonna hop over to Apple Keynote. All right, over here in Keynote, this is Keynote version 13.2. I'm gonna create a new blank black project in 16 by nine aspect ratio. I'll delete all the template text from the default slide. Then I'm gonna drag and drop the frame I exported out of iMovie onto the blank slide. I'm gonna use this frame grab as a reference for building my circular camera frame. So to build my circular frame, I'm gonna go up to the top toolbar in the Keynote interface and select the Shape button. And from the Shape menu, I'll select Circle. Now I have this little white circle in the middle of my slide. This is going to be my circle frame. So what I need to do is click and drag on the corner handles of this circle to size it up. Holding down the Shift key while I click and drag constrains the circle to staying a circle. To help me size and position the shape with it selected, I'll go over to the inspector and making sure I've got the style button selected, I'll go down to opacity and drag the slider to the left to reduce the opacity of the circle shape so that I can see through to the video frame, my reference, and adjust the circle frame accordingly. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring the opacity of the circle back up to 100%. All right, now that I have my circle frame in place, the next thing I'm gonna do is go back up and select the shape button again. And this time from the menu, I'll select square. And a square appears on the slide. It's hard to see because it's the same color as my circle. So to fix that with the white square selected, I'll go back over to the inspector, making sure I'm still in the style section. Under fill, I'll make sure color fill is selected. Then I'll click on the color swatch and from the palette, I'll select this chroma key green color. Then I'm gonna stretch my green square until it covers the entire slide. I'm going to uh, zoom out of my slide a little bit to make sure I'm covering the entire slide with the square. All right, my green square is covering the slide, but it's covering everything. I, I don't want that. So I'll right click or control click on the green square and from the menu select send to back. Now the green square is behind everything. I'm gonna bring it forward by right clicking on the reference frame and sending it to the back. All right, now my white circle is on top of my green rectangle, which is vital for this next step. I'm gonna select the white circle first. Then while holding down the shift key on my keyboard, I'll select the green rectangle. Now both shapes are selected. I'll go back over to the inspector and select the arrange button. And in the arrange menu, go all the way down to the bottom to these Boolean operators and select this last button over here, exclude. If we read the tooltip, exclude will combine the selected shapes into a new shape and remove the area where they all overlap. I'll click the button and poof. The white circle cut a hole through the green rectangle, revealing my reference frame underneath. All right, a couple more steps before we send this over to iMovie. Making sure the green cutout shape is selected, I'll go back over to the inspector and select the style button. And in the style menu, I'll go down to border and select the menu that says no border. And from the menu, select line. That outlines the entire shape with a colored border. It's black at the moment, I'm gonna change that by selecting the black color chip and from the color palette, I'll select white. 
I'll bump up the thickness of the white outline a bit by upping the point measurement over in this field. 10 points is usually pretty good. All right, the last thing I need to do before I export this slide is select my video frame reference and back over in the inspector under the style section, click and drag the opacity slider all the way to zero to make the reference frame transparent. Now you could also just delete it, but you never know when you might have to come back to this keynote project. And what we've created here is a circular mask for our talking head video. But before this mask shape can really work, this circle area I cut out needs to be transparent. So to do that, I'll click off the slide so that nothing is selected. Then making sure I'm in the format section, I'll go down to the slide background section and under current fill, I'll select the button that currently says color fill. And from the drop down menu, I'll select no fill. This will make my slide background transparent, which is what I need for this whole thing to work. This swatch with the red line through it confirms there is no slide background. All right, I'm ready to export. So I'll go up to Keynote's top menu and select File, Export to Images. And in the Export dialog, I'll leave Slides set to All, since I only have one slide. I'll make sure Format is set to PNG and that Export with Transparent Backgrounds is checked because I set the background of my slide to no fill and I want that circular hole in the shape I created to be transparent. I'll hit save and save out the image file. And head back over to iMovie to finish up. All right, I'm back over in my demo project here in iMovie and I'm gonna drag in my circular image mask I created in Keynote and drop it in the media browser. All right, to create the circular picture-in-picture -picture frame for my talking head, we're going to use a little trick in iMovie called pre-rendering. We're going to create a couple of elements in iMovie, then pre-export or pre-render them out, then bring them back into iMovie to finish our effect. Pre-rendering gets us around iMovie's limit of only two video tracks, as you'll see. This will all make sense as I build things out. All right, for the first element I'm going to pre-render, I'm going to create a new project. So I'll go up and select the Projects button and select Create New Movie. I'll hit the Project button again to rename the new project to Circle Frame Pass 01 so I can keep track of things. I'll double click on the project to open it up for editing. I'm going to select my on-camera clip in the browser, then hit the E key on my keyboard to add the clip to the timeline. Then I'm going to grab my circle mask shape from Keynote in the browser and place it on top of my on-camera clip as an overlay clip in cutaway mode. And if I export it out of Keynote correctly, I should see my on-camera clip through the hole in my image mask. And there it is. Perfect. I'm going to stretch out the image mask on the timeline to cover my entire on-camera clip. And that's all I need to do to create my first pre-rendered element for this effect. So I'll export this project by going up to the top right of iMovie and selecting the Share button. From the menu, I'll select Export File. In the Export Settings, I'll leave Resolution at 1080p. Make sure Quality is set to High. And for Compress, I'll make sure Better Quality is selected. Hit Next and save out my file. Once that's finished exporting, I'll grab it and drag it into the event for this demo. And there it is in the browser. All right, for the next step, I'm going to go back into projects and open up the main project again, circular camera frame demo. I'm going to select my on-camera clip sitting above the B-roll sequence here and just drag it off to the end of the timeline for the moment. Then I'll grab the first pre-rendered element that I created, that first circle frame pass in the browser and place it on top of the B-roll in the main track. With the circle frame pass selected, I'll go up to the overlay controls on the top of the viewer, and from the menu that currently says Cutaway, I'll select Picture in Picture. And my circle frame pass clip shrinks down, and now is a Picture in Picture clip, so that I can resize it, and I can position it where I want to for my final video. That looks pretty good. 
While I'm at it, I'm just going to remove this default dissolve transition on the picture in picture clip by entering zero and the dissolve transition duration up here. So my circle frame picture in picture face cam shot is in place. But what about this green part around it? How am I going to fix that with one more pre render? All right, making sure my adjusted picture in picture clip is selected. I'm going to press Command C on my keyboard to copy this picture in picture clip. Then I'll go back to projects and create another new project. I'll rename this one circle frame pass two. In this new blank project, I'm going to go up and open the backgrounds browser. And from the backgrounds collection, select the solid green background and drag it onto the timeline. I'll stretch it out a little bit. Now I'll place the playhead at the beginning of the timeline, then hit command V on my keyboard to paste the picture in picture clip I copied from the other project on top of the green background. And there it is with the same size and positioning as the other project. Yes, you can copy and paste clips between projects in iMovie. All right, that's all the editing we need to do for this pre-rendered element. So let's export. I'll go up and open the share menu, select export file, resolution 1080p, quality high, compress better quality, hit next, save out the file. I'll go back into projects and open up the main project again circular camera frame demo. I'm going to get rid of this picture in picture clip on the timeline. I don't need it anymore. I'll grab that last exported pre render that we just did circle frame pass two, and I'm going to drag it into the event for this demo. And there it is in the browser. And that's it. All the pre rendering is done. So now all I have to do is grab that last pre rendered clip with the big green square and the little circle of me in the corner and put it on top of my main track in the timeline. With that clip selected, I'll go up to the overlay controls and switch it from cutaway to green blue screen. And bam, the green background is gone and I'm left with my talking head in a circular frame with a nice little outline. You can see this discoloration around my circle frame. That's because the green background from Keynote is slightly different than the green background from iMovie. Not a problem. I'll just use the cleanup tool up here to remove the green background around my circle frame and hit the blue check mark to lock in my change. Let's play back full screen. Now you can mix your full screen on camera video with a nice little circular picture in picture shot to add some nice variety to your video. Yes, that effect takes a few steps, but having those different pre rendering stages means you can easily go back into any of those pre rendering projects and make adjustments to the size and positioning of the circle frame if you have to. And if you're looking for more iMovie tricks like this, have a look at this video on my channel.